Hey friends, welcome back. Let's continue our session with the PXC environment. And in the last session, what we did was we set up a PXC server and installed a virtual machine. In this session, what we are going to do is we'll create a kickstart file and force the machine to be installed with the operating system with the desired configuration. And as soon as it's installed, formatted, and rebooted you will get the machine with the desired services on I'll show you how so the first thing that we need to do is uh, okay first thing that we need to do is we have to install the GUI on this so uh, this machine and the second thing after it is installation of a package which is system config kickstart yum install system config kickstart okay so now the system config kickstart this command can be used to create a kickstart file the default language for our scenario is going to be English let it be default keyboard is US English works fine for us we are talking about the time zone I want it to be UTC so here I find it etc slash UTC and system clock is set to UTC root password I set it encrypt the root password that's good practice reboot the system after installation check it perform text based installation check it because it's faster as compared to GUI architecture is x86 64 bit so it works fine for me moving into next perform new installation yes installation source is going to be NFS server that we have configured 192.168.1.205 will be the IP address of NFS server and it's located on slash media Install a new bootloader. Good. Setting up grub password is a good practice. I set the password on it. Encrypt grub password. Install the bootloader on MBR. So this is going to be the default bootloader which can allow multiple operating systems to be booted from it. Clear MBR if you want to clear. It can be cleared and it will be reinstalled. Disk label initialize, do not initialize, let them be default. The first thing that is to be done is create a boot partition. 100 MB is fine for it. EXT4 works for RHEL or CentOS 6. Add a new partition which is swap. Size is 1 GB. Okay. And finally create the root partition with ext4 fill all the unused disk space or the other option that we could use is uh, okay hmm this is for raid let's create a static partition in that case I was looking for uh, hard drives add file system type mount point is root fill all the unused disk space click on OK 
now we have created root boot and swap partition and uh, let me see so it's fill all the unused space that works fine coming on to network configuration add the network device eth0 specify the IP address by DHCP authentication in case we want to use NIS just check it for LDAP check it provided the LDAP server details right now I have not configured it so leave them coming on to next firewall SLNX is active enable firewall allow SSH trusted services or if you want to uncheck keep it unchecked we will have to specifically open it display configuration on the first boot setup agent is the one that asks you for setting up the time zone uh, setting up a new user we don't want it package selection we want to just install the base packages and pre-installation nothing post installation I want to add the repository to it let me test the command this is my repository till EOF send it to and okay okay so it's fine uh, so what this command is going to do is okay and EOF at the end so from EOF till EOF whatever you type will be typed to this file and this will happen in uh, if like the thing is either there could be one option in which you can use echo to send the output to this particular file the other option is through this syntax till EOF copy everything to labs.repo so as soon as the machine is up the repository will be set up additionally you can specify a set of commands over here if you want to specify so file save it as so let's mark it as ks.cfg okay now this kickstart file has been created but this needs to be exported in some way so that it is accessible by the clients that are getting installed so let's do one thing let's create a folder ks and mv home rcval ks.cfg to ks folder we have the kickstart in ks folder but we have not yet exported ks folder etc exports so I'll be using NFS to export it to my environment and then export FS minus R now slash ks folder is exported to the complete environment fine ks slash ks dot cfg is my kickstart file now the second thing is I tell the DHCP server or sorry uh, where lib tftp boot pxclinux.cfg default I'll tell my client to use the kickstart file ks equal to nfs colon 
which is my NFS server colon slash ks ks dot cfg so now this whichever client is trying to boot using this configuration file will try to install from slash ks ks dot cfg I save it and quit now I move on to my test VM and just power it on open console and here I can see there are two options default was hard disk I just select CentOS 6.3 here you can see it's loading kernel and initardi have been loaded let's see the other options so it's initializing network manager interface is being configured so till now it has not asked you anything So here you can see that it's creating the file system, creating the partitions, but it did not ask us anything. The reason being, we specified it a kickstart configuration file location through NFS and this client test VM used that kickstart file for the installation purpose and it fetched out everything from that kickstart file. So here you can see that it has started installing the packages it has formatted the partitions it has taken the IP address but it did not ask anything from us all is specified in this configuration file here is what you can see firewall is enabled as SSH is allowed NFS server is 192.168.1.205 directory is slash media so this is the infra server itself authentication use shadow etc shadow password algorithm is specified here text install text first boot disable keyboard language slnx we enforced it logging level info time zone UTC networking it should be DHCP on ETH0 and on boot switch it on bootloader where is it to be installed it is to be installed on master boot record and this is the password for bootloader clear partition every time clear all the partitions and create a new partition layout here is the partition layout for boot swap and root post what needs to be done is uh, I did a mistake <laughs> while copying I did a mistake so actually this should be HTTP infra dot labs dot local slash sent to us 63 sorry this was my mistake and I'll correct it as soon as the VM is up because reinstallation of the VM is again going to take time but from the next time in case this machine is going to boot up it will use the new kickstart file which points to this yum repository so it's 100% completed 
so final part which is left is installation of the MBR installation of the bootloader on MBR which is also done so machine is now rebooting So by default it's from hard disk so no concern just click on hard disk press enter and it starts booting from it. Now I'll try to log in with the password that I specified it. Root password is Red Hat. And I'm into it. Yum. Repo list. So here you can see a infra repo which is labs local repository which I manually added. labs.repo this was the file exported by me so instead of file media uh, it should be http infra.labs.local so let me modify my kickstart file to remove additional repositories rm minus f slash etc yum dot repos dot d star dot repo so as soon as the vm is uh, or the machine is installed all the repositories will be removed from it and only one repository which is labs dot repo will be added to it Labs repo. I correct it. HTTP So here infra repo it is able to fetch the packages from. So this is how the complete automated infrastructure works. So you set up a PXC server on infra and you set up your YAM repository. You define a set of packages that are required to be installed. So finally you create a file which is ks.cfg you can have a look into it and finally in the post section you can implement a set of commands that are required to be executed after it so that's all for the kickstart thanks for viewing the video have a good day